In this video, we're going to look at the solutions to absolute value inequalities, and there are some special or, yeah, I'll call them special solutions to those inequalities that uh, we're going to look at and try to recognize before going through the entire inequality. Uh, but before we get to that, I just want to look at reviewing these compound inequalities because absolute value inequalities actually turn into compound inequalities. So my first one, uh, being I'm a very visual person, I like to visualize what this looks like. And then, since it's an and inequality, if I were to pull those two out, this one's going to say negative 8 is less than a, and then we have and a is less than or equal to negative 12. So if I come to this first one, I have to graph a is greater than negative 8, reading it backwards. So if I put negative 8 on my graph right here, a is greater than that, that's going to look like this. And then if I go to my other one, a is less than or equal to negative 12. Well, if negative 8 is here, negative 12 is going to have to be farther to the left. I have less than or equal to negative 12. That's what the graph would look like. But now remember, this was an and compound inequality. Well, are there any solutions that are greater than negative 8 and also negative 12? No, there are not. So if we think back, this compound inequality had no solution. Okay. Now I have this other scenario. Again, I'm going to go visual on it. B is greater than or equal to 4, or B is less than 10. I don't have to pull this one apart because they're both there right away. So I'm just going to start with B is greater than or equal to 4. Well, I'm going to put my 4 right here, greater than or equal to, and it's going to go that direction. My other one, B is less than 10. Well, 4 is there. 10 is going to have to be out here to the right somewhere. There. And now we're going to have to go this way. So it's going to keep going that way. This red is going to continue through here. And when I look at my number line, the entire number line is covered. So every number is a solution because this time, remember, we have an or. So only one of them has to be true, or both of them could be true. But in this case, we have... Um, all real numbers as our solutions. Oh, struggling to write. I apologize. All real numbers. So we had those two kind of special cases. There were some more, but those are the two that I just wanted to focus on right now. Now, let's go and let's look at solving this compound inequality. If we think back to previous videos, to solve, a com uh, to solve an absolute value inequality, we first had to isolate the absolute value symbol, meaning we had to get it all by itself. So the first thing I would do is I want to get rid of that negative 3. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 to undo the multiplication. Now I'm left with the absolute value of m plus 2. Now remember, divided by a negative, so I have to flip the sign, is greater than negative 4. And at this point, this is when we'd be able to break it apart into two inequalities. We'd look at this and go, well, we have the greater than symbol. That is an or compound inequality. So if I break it into those two inequalities... Remember, we take what's inside the absolute value, which is m plus 2. One time, we just leave the other side as is, negative 4. And when we leave the other side as is, the symbol stays like this. The other time, we take what's inside the absolute value. That doesn't change. But then we have to change the sign on the other side. So a negative 4 is going to become a positive 4. But when we switch the sign, we have, or switch the, the negative to a positive or positive to negative, we also have to flip the sign. Remember, we still have an or compound inequality. So now we continue on. We just solve these two little equations. So my first one, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I just figured out that m is greater than negative 6. In my other one, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. In this one, we figure out that m is less than 2. So it looks like that. But what does that mean graphically? Well, graphically, I have the numbers negative 6 and positive 2. Negative 6 would be here. Positive 2 is going to be out here. Now, if I graph this, m has to be greater than negative 6. Going that way. And then the other one, m is less than 2. Going that way. That's going to keep going. That's going to keep going. We have an or. So one of them has to be true, or just one has to be true, not both of them all the time. So this is one of those situations where 
when it's all said and done, the final answer would be all real numbers. Okay. So we started with this, this inequality here. We isolated the, the absolute value symbol. And then we went through and solved it. And in the end, we ended up with all real numbers. Now I want to look at this example. Same thing's going to happen. First, we have to isolate the variable. So let's subtract the 3 from both sides for starters. Now we have 2 times the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than negative 2. And then we're going to have to divide both sides by 2 to get the absolute value all by itself. So the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than negative 1. All right. This is the time where we would break this into two inequalities. We look at this. The absolute value is less than. That tells us that we have an and compound inequality. So now I write those two inequalities. Everything that's inside the absolute value sign stays as is. One time, remember, we keep the number on the right as is, which means the inequality symbol stays that way. The other time, we take what's inside the absolute value, leave it the way it is, but then we have to switch the sign on our inequality symbol, and that would be, it, or not on the inequality symbol, excuse me, switch the sign on our number, so negative 1 becomes positive 1, and when we switch the negative to a positive or positive to a negative, we have to flip the sign. Remember, and compound inequality, now we go through and we solve this. So my first one, subtract the 5 from both sides. And we have x is less than negative 6. In this one, we're going to subtract the 5 from both sides. And we end up with x is greater than negative 4. Again, still and. Now, if I were to look at this visually, because I'm a very visual person, I think it's very helpful. I have the numbers negative 6 and negative 4. Well, negative 6 is farther to the left than negative 4. And now I graph this. Well, it says x is less than negative 6. That's out here. And then I have x is greater than negative 4. That would be like this. This was an and compound inequality. Was it possible to have a number greater than negative 4 and less than negative 6? No. So when this one's all said and done, this one has no solution as well. Now, I don't want you to go through all that work. I just went through all the work to show you that it can be kind of long and time-consuming. But the part that I want you to focus on is right here. We're going to circle this in my one of my favorite colors here, maybe. Pink. Right there. This is what's going to give it away. Okay. So I want you to think about what it means. This is telling you that the absolute value of something is less than negative 1. The distance away from some number is less than negative 1. Was it possible to have a distance that's negative? Absolutely not. So I can't be less than a negative away. Therefore, right here, that inequality right there is going to tell you that there are no solutions. There's no solution to it. So I don't think that you need to go through and do all of that work. I want you to go from here right down to the bottom and say there's no solution because I cannot find any numbers that are going to have an absolute value that's going to be less than a negative. Impossible. Now, using that same th idea, I'll come and look at this one, and I'm going to focus right here. Once I get to this point, I look at it and go, well, now this time it's telling me that the absolute value of something is greater than a negative. Well, everything the absolute value of anything is always positive. Therefore, the left side of my inequality is positive. The right side is a negative. That's always true. I don't care what number I put into it. It's always going to be true. That's why all real numbers are solutions. So again, all of this is unnecessary. You can do it. It just takes you a lot longer to get there. When you start recognizing that when you have the absolute value of something greater than a negative, all real numbers, or when you have the absolute value of something is less than a negative, there's no solution. 
And that's going to conclude my video on the special cases or the special solutions to absolute value inequalities.